Hi Clutter Fairy fans, this is the Clutter Fairy Weekly for January 16th, 2024. Happy New Year! I'm your co-host Ed Gumnick and I'm speaking with Gail Goddard, certified professional organizer and owner of the Clutter Fairy in Houston, Texas. Hi everybody! The Clutter Fairy Weekly is the webcast and podcast that digs deep into the clutter that piles up between you and the life that you want to be living. We explore the habits and behaviors that lead to clutter, and we suggest strategies to slow the accumulation, reduce the collection, and comfortably manage the stuff we decide to keep. If you're new to our Zoom meeting, we want to let you know that you can share your comments and questions via the chat, and I'll try to make sure Gail gets to them before we move on to another topic. You can also use the raise hand feature if you'd like to make a comment or ask a question yourself via audio or video. And we're streaming the webcast live on Facebook. So you can share your questions and comments there and I'll relay them to Gail. We're going to start by recapping our weekly tittle, which was called Report Card. The assignment was to reflect on your 2023 successes and areas that could use more attention this year. Let's hear from our participants in Zoom and on Facebook. Who'd like to share your report card with us? Please let us know in the comments. YouTube viewer Hippabellito1 shared this report card with us. One, accomplishments this year. Less than planned, but sold excess Christmas stuff. Sorted out all books, baking utensils, all KitchenAid accessories I didn't want anymore. Excess sports clothes and other clothes. New habit formed in 2023. Instead of doing a large pile of dishes in the evening, dishes are now integrated into the routines throughout the day, thus costs no effort at all. Dishwasher gets sold in 2024. Uh, you know, she put a wink on that, Gail, so she might, that last <laughs> bit might not have been. Gail and I were, were talking about this one and saying, I don't know if getting rid of the dishwasher was how far you needed to go. <clears throat> maybe it's, maybe she's teasing she might have been teasing with that bit <laughs> okay hippabellita one went on to say two new habit for 2024 getting rid of paper notes clutter by starting to use my rocket book in an organized manner i think that's a, that's a type of tablet yes it um, is three goal for 2024 selling all the excess stuff so that we have a normal household easy to clean and thus motivating to clean and can finally start renovating the house. This involves 13 areas, scary, but it's visualized concretely now. All the best for you, 2024, that your wishes will come true and your plans accomplished. Thanks for that, Hippabilita. Thank you so much. It sounds like you have a concrete plan to get some things done in 2024, yay. Um, if you have 13 areas to address, that means you get um, one done every like three and a half weeks. I gave you a couple weeks off for various holiday breaks for the year. <clears throat> Some of those areas might actually take longer than others, but if you aim to complete an area in three weeks, you should have a little bit of wiggle room for areas that actually take more than three weeks to get through. Um, this time next year, you could be telling us about your completely overhauled space. Uh, we'll be here for you as you go. And so keep checking in with us. And let us know how you're progressing. A great job on doing the tittle. You did a great review of your last year. You got a plan for this year. Go, you did exactly what we wanted. Was think about it, make a little plan, and you're ready to go. So keep us in the loop about how it's going. Paula says, I had more items in my home on January 1st than on December 31st. So I get an A plus. Ooh, yes, yes, you did. I'm an, yes, I'm an easy grader. <laughs> <laughs> hey that is totally exactly what we're going to talk about today yeah so exactly. good it's job right, <laughs> right? That is, she is right on brand yes you're absolutely uh, joined in the party today so good for you jane in california says during our break i kept up with three hot spots flat surfaces i've been great Ooh. keeping the habit of not letting things land on these and stay there here's hoping that habit will be kept up in 2024 very cool. That is an excellent one. Man managing, doing the maintenance related to your hot spots and doing that consistently. Good job. That's that was a great one. A great habit to build on, to practice, to keep up with. And even if you slip a week, you're not that far off the target, right? You just have to do a little bit more to clean it back up on the back end. And so uh, you don't let yourself uh, feel discouraged if if for some reason it goes a little awry for a few days, you can always scoop it back up and get back to normal. So good job. That's a great one. Well, and, and, 
and what a terrific thing to to do during the holiday break because it's so easy to just sort of let everything go yeah uh, maintaining uh, that focus now, during the holidays you know, right yeah <laughs> we're at the top of the list right <laughs> I, yeah uh, it's so easy to let the good practices and routines fall by the wayside and then you're you find yourself in January scratching your head and trying to remember how to do your job right but the, you know she makes the she makes it obvious that the what made it work was that she kept it top of mind and focused on it, right? Like she had, did intention word, like she has an intention about it she, and she, she kept it top of mind and she was able to stay on top of it. So good deal. I'm proud of you. Yeah. Catherine said she did, did an intention word instead of a new year's resolution. And the intention word is less. That's an excellent word. You can say that in all kinds of spaces, Less food in the fridge, less stuff in the pantry, less, less clothes in the closet, less junk on the floor. You can modify that all over the place. So cool. That's less, a good focus. Uh, less bottles in the shower. <laughs> right? <laughs> less beer less in the fridge. <laughs> teeny tiny scraps of soap. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> That's funny. Okay, let's go. Let's get on to our main topic. How's okay. that sound? Gamification is the practice of incorporating traditional elements of games like scorekeeping, rewards, social components, and so on, to non-game contexts such as decluttering and organizing. Today we're going to explore the pros and cons of gamifying your organizing process and suggest ways to set yourself up to win big. We're a little late getting started this year thanks to Ed's electricity this, this past week, but we're all good now, so thanks everybody for waiting patiently for us to return. Uh, first of all, let me say Happy New Year, everybody, and welcome to Go Month, Get Organized Month. It's January 2024, and we're in the traditional month when NAPO focuses on Go Month with activities at the local chapter web level as well as in individual businesses, and uh, there's a discussion and marketing at the national level too. <laughs> we're all trying to support you. As you begin the new year, picking up your organizing projects after, again, after slacking after the holidays, which we all do, except for the person who was except just for talking, Jane. who did it, who did it, <laughs> <laughs> right? How good for her. And what better way to start up Go Month than to talk about gamifying your decluttering process to make it more fun and more inspiring. Depending on how you respond to rewards and competition, you can add some game elements to your organizing chores to make them more engaging and hopefully more inspiring so that you want to keep going. And we need to give credit to this topic idea. It goes to Dawson, who made this suggestion in a Facebook post. Dawson wrote this, I would like some help staying motivated and was intrigued by Ed's gamifying his decluttering efforts. I wonder if we can explore this topic more and if Ed would be willing to share more particulars of how he de games decluttering. Dawson, your, rich, your wish is our command. <laughs> Since Ed loves gamifying all kinds of things, we're going to let him introduce this topic and he'll share his expertise throughout today. So Ed, please start us off. I should probably start with a disclaimer, which is that I, I, don't really think I gamified my have gamified my decluttering that much because I did <laughs> I did the lion's share of my decluttering with Gail at my right hand, and uh, so I all I was doing was playing Gail playing Gail's game, <laughs> which was get rid of that. <laughs> explain this stuff to me and or get rid of it. <clears throat> but I've uh, but I do gamify a lot of things and. Um, I want to talk about the background of uh, the idea of gamification just for a moment, and then also my own experiences with it before we get to talking about how to apply it to organizing. Um, background, um, gamification in principle has really been around for a long time. Um, the oldest example I found cited by people who talk about this academically is uh, green stamps, SNH green stamps. Um, I, I don't know if they go beyond the United States and maybe Canada, but green stamps were uh, little trading stamps that were issued by grocery stores, gas stations, department stores, and some other retailers. And you would collect them and you'd pay, you'd, you'd lick them and stick them in little books. And then when you collected enough, you could buy things out of the 
SNH catalog. And um, that it was still a really popular thing when I was a small child. Did you ever collect green stamps, Gail? I remember green stamps and and there was a I remember a time when I was I was helping paste into a book. So I must have been really young at the time, but I do remember yeah. the books, playing with the books, seeing the books, messing with the books. Yeah, and I remember and vaguely, you know, the whole go to the catalog and find what you want to buy thing. Right. And so this was gamification <laughs> of uh, as a way to create retail loyalty. It was, this, this was like the first loyalty program anyone created because you had to shop at the businesses that issued green stamps. Um, another example is Boy Scout and Girl Scout merit badges. These were really gamified ways of achieving educational and, and training goals. Um, the term was actually, the term gamification was coined in 2002. And this was when, this was in the context of starting to make more things like video games, since video games had exploded in popularity over the, the previous decades. <clears throat> And uh, and it really went nuts in the the t twenty teens, in which everyone was gamifying everything. And and uh, there was actually a a twenty ten TED talk about how gamif gamification would be the future. And um, and sure enough, people are gamifying education, especially mathematics. You know, designing educational games that get played in school or in in um you know tutoring set uh settings to help kids to help make this somewhat difficult learning experience more fun more more engaging and um gamification is also really popular in developing workplace culture in in some corporate settings it's popular with fundraising you know we've all seen the fundraising thermometer where we have to you know drive up the drive up the dollar amount up the, up the, to the scale um and then also of course marketing you know um frequent flyer programs were really gamification before the term had been coined trying to give you an incentive to stick with this one particular airline by letting you collect points that you could then use to claim claim prizes or get discounts on future flying and so forth. Um, my own background, um, I worked with a, a coach by the name of Madison Gray back in starting in around 2006. And one of the things that, that she talked about that really stuck with me was um, she said some people, she talked about a model, and I, I, I'm, I'm afraid I don't know who came up with this particular model, but she said, some people are motivated by money, some people are motiva motivated by fame, some people are motiva motivated by winning. And I, mm -hmm. I think that's a little bit of a simplistic model, but of those three things, I'm definitely more motivated by winning than by fame or money. The idea of, of having the highest the highest test score or the best grade or the being on the top of the the top of the list you know the number one in the class or whatever whatever you're trying for um winning motive winning motivates me and and madison said that for people who are oriented toward winning the best way to accomplish anything you want to accomplish is design a game you can win and and she went on to explain, you know, she pointed out the she she gave the example of uh, of baseball, you know, in baseball, when we're starting out with little tiny children, they play t-ball where the ball is sitting on, it sits on a tee, and the kid takes some swings, and whether or not they hit the ball, they run down to first base afterwards, and then when they're a little older, they get pitches you know soft pitches from from one of the dads and when they're a little older the kids start to pitch and a, as they get older and older you get more complex rules more knowledge that you have to to learn um 
but at each level, it's possible to win the game. And uh, that really, really stuck with me. And, and, and I think that for anybody who feels this urge to win, which is probably a lot of us, uh, if you can make some kind of a game out of something, it's going to be more fun. It's going to be more engaging. And so I've talked here, talked here before about how for my own time and task management, I will come up with you know today's trifecta here here are the three things i have to accomplish that will make today a spectacular success and sometimes some of the things are really small because sometimes three things is too many to try and accomplish in a day you know because you've you've of course you've got life to do in addition to all the the tasks you're trying to juggle so um, that's that's kind of a backstory about gamification, and we've talked about it a little in the context of decluttering or organizing before, but not that much. So we're gonna that's what we're digging into today. Okay, so now let's talk about what it looks like exactly to gamify your organizing process. Of course, there's no single perfect answer, so you get to define it for yourself based on what you think is fun or cool to do. We'll give you some examples and some ideas, and then you can customize your gaming elements around your own needs, around what is actually going to motivate you. One element of a gamification is racking up points or scorekeeping that we he was mentioning earlier. Track your progress with charts that you make, lists that you keep, calendar entries or photos you do every day. So an example, take a photo every day and make a collage of them as the progress happens. So you can see this is where I started day one, day two, day three in, to you know, the end. And you can have an ever improving set of photographs to be your motivation. You can make a to-do list of donations that you need to make that you can hang up somewhere and check off when each errand gets done. You can keep a running tally on the fridge of how many bags of trash and recycling go out from an organizing project and how many bags of stuff go to donation. It's just cool to watch that list get bigger every time you work on a project, to be able to say, I took out 15 bags of trash this week. Even if you can't see the progress in your room, you can look at your list and go, except I put 15 full bags of trash in the trash bin, or I threw 15 bags into recycling, or I took 12 bags off to donation. To remind you of what how big that list, how much work you've actually done. And over time, that number is only going to go up, right? If you start that list of things that went to recycling, bags that went to trash, bags that went to donation today, and you add to that list all in 2024, you're going to be stunned by the number you get at the end of the year. You're just going to be stunned. And normally we don't think about that. You take it off to donation and you forget about it. <clears throat> but if you need motivation by making that number get bigger and bigger, that's an easy one to do. Just put a list up and start documenting as you go. If you're a crafty person, you can make a checkoff charts decorated. You can use stickers to mark successful work sessions. You can use multiple color markers to note successes. You can get out your craft supplies and roll them into your gamification if that makes it more fun for you. Check off each scheduled session that you work on a calendar, whether that's paper or digital. It can be as easy um, and simple as putting a cute sticker on a calendar day square every time you work on an organizing project for a certain amount of time. Um, for example, you have to work for two hours to put a sticker up. Then see how many stickers show up on the calendar in a month. You can add in a rewards element by declaring if you get 20 stickers in a month on the calendar, then you get some kind of a treat and always aim towards what's gonna motivate you personally. Um, I, ha I have a memory of a friend who, uh, the dining room table being covered up with stuff really bothered her partner. And so she made it a game to use her Star Wars stickers that she liked. You know, she was probably in her forties at the time, but she was like, she wanted to use those stickers. And so she got a calendar and put stickers every day that she managed to clean off the dining table. And so, that allowed her to see the successful accomplishment. And even if there's a day or two that's missed, 
you still see the bulk of the days being covered in stickers as you go along. And it gives you a sense of accomplishment to see all of those up there. So um, for her, it was fun to play with the stickers. It was fun to fill in the calendar. She hated clearing the dining table, but she loved putting the sticker up. So <laughs> she got her reward by being able to play with the stickers on the calendar. And, you know, that is as low cost as you can get is some stickers that she had and a calendar that she slapped up to work on. And so it definitely does not have to be a super expensive thing to do. <clears throat> you can also use rewards as a gamification element. So every time you achieve a milestone, so many hours worked or decluttering appointments kept or phone calls made or errands that you run earns you some kind of reward. So would you aim for a massage? I would totally aim for a massage, <laughs> totally. <clears throat> or maybe you're going to spend $25 online or you're going to have a dinner out with friends. Um, rewards can be something free and easy. Like if I work for an hour, I get 15 minutes on my phone watching YouTube. Or if I work for three hours, I can take a movie break. Uh, rewards can be longer term. Like if I work three days this week for two hours, I get to order my favorite pizza for dinner on the weekend. Um, you can match the rewards to what truly motivates you. So if you need short-term rewards to keep going, design a small reward after an easy to attain goal. Like if you work for two hours, you get ice cream or a nap. Those are super easy. If you can keep working for a longer period or multiple sessions before you need a reward as motivation, then you can make it a bigger reward for more work. Like, movie tickets after working several hours during the week. So you work all week long and you accomplish the goals for the week. And then you go and take yourself to the movies. You and your friends go to the movies. It's super easy to do. And it's a way to keep you motivated when you're feeling like, I really don't want to do this, but if I do this, I get to take a nap. And so then you can, right. you know, you can think about that reward while you're getting started. Let, let me uh, share a few comments before we, we go on. Okay. Um, because the, the chat is is very active. Um several people mentioned uh having grown up doing green stamps or blue stamps. I don't remember uh blue someone said referred to them as blue star. Must have been or a competing it? company. Probably so, yeah. Yeah, Different I can't program. find that one now. Um Ginger said, I gamify tasks in general. I create a bingo game uh, to get monthly ta tasks done and bingo to get weekly tasks done. During the day when I need to focus, I'll do threes. One, get dressed and make my bed. Two, reboot laundry. Three, put away dishes and so on. Um, Ginger cool. also wrote, let's see, I want to find, she said, the bingo is my fun way to motivate myself to do more of my planned tasks completed during the week. I use a random number generator to get the bingo numbers for my seven by seven bingo card. Ooh. The bingo squares are related to the tasks in my weekly plan. Squares one through 14 are weekly tasks, 15 through 21 zone cleaning, 22 through 31 habits and to do's, 32 through 41 desk work. And for the last numbers, 48, 42 to 48, I use any tasks. Wait, there's one missing. I guess maybe, there, maybe there's a free space. <laughs> she left out 49. There's always a free space in bingo, isn't there? I use any task completed under errands or calls and schedule. Cool. Um, and yeah, let's, uh, Jane said, I just realized I, I gamified decluttering by choosing a minimum number of things I want to donate each year. Yes, you do. Because I'm pretty far along this journey. This year, it's 104, two per week. Trash Excellent. doesn't count. Yeah, but you, but you, like you've set a goal and you've broken down that you can accomplish that goal if you set two things a week. And so you're in your head, you're always aiming for that two a week of things to go out and checking them off as you go so that at the end of the year, you've hit your 104 goal. That's awesome. That's totally gamification. <clears throat> uh, CJ job. says, a while back, I gamified weekly cleaning tasks by essentially relabeling labeling a circular selector like the spinner used for Twister oh, right. to, pick my, to pick my next task. And Catherine says, did a game with my children and siblings uh, clean up the house war? 
<laughs> deal, deal out cards and difference between numbers, how many things you needed to do to clean up or remove from areas. So like like the game of war where you you're you know the high card wins. In this case, the difference between the cards is how many things you needed to do or to clean up. Oh, how funny. That's awesome. I love calling it the house cleaning war. Clean up house war. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Clean up the house war. <laughs> um, let's see. That's hilarious. Yes. Uh, oh, Jane said my mom had blue chip stamps too. Oh, okay. I wasn't familiar with those. Uh, and then um, Amanda said, I swiped some fancy dice from my gamer boyfriend. I'll roll a D10 twice to get a two, sometimes three. D10 is, a, I guess, the 10-sided? Yeah. The 10-sided die? Um, to get a two or sometimes three-digit number of objects I need to put away or declutter. Oh. And Connie said, one game has two versions. Write, six, write numbered six tasks. So you write down six things on a sheet of paper, one through six, and, and throw a die. That's what you do that's what you do first or that's the task you don't have to do those are the two versions of the game cool i like that so i mean you can you can say i have six things to do today but i'm going to give myself a pass on this one because that's the number that popped up when you rolled the game right i love it i love it (gasps) and there's that moment of which one's gonna win (laughs) (laughs) which one do i not have to do and Ginger also said there's a group online who declutter the number of items of the year. So this year they're working together to get rid of t- 2024 items. Wow, they, they that's chart, cool. They have a chart with 2024 blocks to color in. I love that. That's cool. And that's like a team game too, right? Like everybody's participating at whatever, you know, at whatever speed they can. That's awesome, man. M says, I pretend that I'm showing hired help how to do the job, which requires hands-on demonstration. Right. That's, I guess that's that's sort of gamification. That's also sort of theater of a theaterification. I don't know if that's a word. <laughs> theatrification. Theatrification. Yeah, theatrification. We'll call it that. That's hilarious. If it's not a word, it should be. And it's so in such great context. Right. Okay. Let's go back to our material. We'll share some more comments later. Okay, so the last element of gamification we're talking about is adding social components so that you can have some support on your project. So enroll your friends or acquaintances, maybe some fellow decluttering friends, work on your projects as a team, reporting to each other at certain times, and then schedule out the calendar for a while, helping to form a new habit from the accountability of doing it together. So if you can come up with a team of people, whether it's one or two or three people that all want to be working on organizing projects like you and you guys can schedule out time together. I'm going to do this many, we're going to do this many appointments or we're going to get together on these days for accountability. And then we're going to talk about how we've been doing um, and go out on the calendar and make several appointments for that so that you can um, have that added pressure of you are going to meet with people in order to uh, get you motivated. <laughs> You can agree to communicate when you start a session and when you stop with a report of what got done. So the person receiving the report can then say, congrats, you you did such a good job. And getting that supportive feedback really helps you stay motivated. So being able to tell somebody, I started, I stopped, and here's what I got done. You can also start and stop together. Um, you agree at, to start and stop at the same time check in and start working at the same agreed upon time and then or you can facetime and zoom and be online with each other while you work that's super easy to do nowadays right you can get out the phone and whip up zoom and have it be there while you guys are working together that way you can ask questions in real time and get support to stay on task for the agreed upon work session Uh, working together is going to help you stay focused and it creates accountability so It's just like anybody that goes to exercise with a partner. When you don't feel like getting out of bed, you are assuming that your partner, your workout buddy is getting out of bed. And so then you get out of bed, even though you don't want to. So (laughs) the accountability of somebody else um, lets you do it, even when you feel um, unmotivated or unenthusiastic. 
And then you get there and you're working with somebody else and you're on Zoom or FaceTime together. And it's not as you know awful as you think. <clears throat> if you and your friend like competition, then you can play against each other, uh, scoring points for each project declared and finished. Think about the fitness apps where you are part of a group and the most steps wins for the week. I, this happens in um, in the Fitbit right. environment where people, they are, they're all sort of part of a collective group and then you can see everybody's score for the week and be motivated by, you know, I want to win ahead of the group. I want to beat that person's score, their step score. So you can do the same thing here. You can decide what gains points and score it for a week and the winner gets something from the loser five dollar in a jar and three months later you guys buy dinner um that week's loser donates to the winner's favorite charity or buys their favorite candy or whatever it can be simple and easy and low cost or it can be some real skin in the game type prize agree on whatever you and your partner are comfortable with but most important what motivates you to work on your projects if competition is your thing Use it to create accountability and focus on your projects. I do want to add a little um, discussion about the risks of the gamification process. There are some risks. Any games that you design must be simple enough that you don't end up spending more time playing the game than accomplishing what you're hoping to accomplish organizing wise. So you don't want to be distracted by your game from your original goal, which was to get organized. Well, and it, and it shouldn't have a massive overhead of, extra work that it requires yeah I mean, to to score to record yeah, to to you don't want to you don't want to spend 20 hours making your game board and designing your tokens or whatever right. <laughs> yeah we don't we're not trying to add work to your stuff we just want it to be a little bit an easy game to follow right uh, rewards should not be counterproductive for example, if you're extra if you're exercising for weight loss, then you don't want to reward yourself with junk food. So you know, make sure that the the rewards that you put in are not counterproductive for something you're trying to do. Well, and um, a couple of people commented about uh, making rewards the game. Linda said, "Let's see if I can find this." Um, Linda said, I use games as the reward, declutter for an hour, then take a play break and do a Sudoku, Wordle, et cetera. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and you Things you're going to do anyway. Speaking as someone who can, I don't want to use, a, use profanity, someone who can fiddle away hours of playing games, um, <laughs> I have to be careful not to not to make not to fall into the reward and then spend the rest of the day there you know right and not getting anything else done yeah yeah i get it it would be very easy to say oh I'll, i'm gonna i'm gonna declutter for an hour and then i'll let myself watch tv tv for 15 minutes well then you end up watching the whole show and then netflix says do you want to watch the next episode and then you do, <laughs> right? I totally get it. Um, we also don't want, we don't want you to let the game discourage you. If you end up making a game that's a little too elaborate out of your enthusiasm about the idea, or it's too hard to win in an actual execution, don't let that derail you. Instead, modify the game to work better for you. The goal is always to design a game you can win that will keep you motivated to continue your decluttering efforts. If the game turns into demotivation, then it's not a failure. You just need to redesign the game. Winning the game by getting project steps done is the ultimate goal. So fix the game until it's motivating again. That's what we want. We don't want to send you down a rabbit hole that then you feel like you failed. We want you to create a game and recreate and redesign until it's something that you feel comfortable that you can win and that you enjoy winning and it keeps you moving on the project. That's the ultimate goal. <clears throat> um, let me share some more comments. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Ginger uh, um, clarified for me. She said, no, they each get rid of 2,024 items for the year. Wow. So there are questions about how to count papers decluttered. Now, if I think getting rid of 2,000 things in a year is very doable if you're including the category of paper 
where each 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 piece each item counts as something gotten rid of right <clears throat> wow you could uh, you could declutter one file drawer and and reach that and goal get your get it done in a year you know you might have to modify the game a little bit but, for paper but there are no it says, <laughs> she says there are questions about how to count papers decluttered no rules you choose how to count it there's no prize just bragging rights right <clears throat> there you go Linda says, I also view decluttering as a competition. Team Linda against team stuff. Was losing for a long time, but starting to feel like a winner or at least a worthy opponent. I love that. Team Linda versus team stuff. Go team go. <laughs> uh, Liz, awesome. Liz commented parental controls, which I think must be, I think she's suggesting that someone put parental controls on my devices, which is probably a good idea. <laughs> I, I I definitely need that. I need something that says no, nope, nope. You can't watch any more of that. No Stop. more Netflix for you today. Go outside and play. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Hardy wants to do. Um, Edith says, talking about a very simple game, I really enjoy doing a maintenance chore while racing against the timer or against the coffee brewing. I think you know. There's times when I sit around like. I punch the microwave and it's got to go for five minutes. And it, it, when the five minutes is up, I'm going to eat lunch and I'm hungry. And I don't want to stand there and stare at the micro the microwave for five minutes. Right. <laughs> so I look around the kitchen and find something that needs doing in the kitchen for five minutes to distract me. And, you know, putting those cans up or emptying the dishwasher or loading the dishwasher, or throwing the recycling out or whatever. There's always something that I can do while I'm sitting there waiting for the ding to go off of the microwave. And so um, I think that's a great idea. I do have that same response when the coffee's brewing. It's like <laughs> you're standing there going, oh, the coffee is not, you know. And so you might as well find something to do until the coffee's ready. And and it's a great, <clears throat> they're all things, it's all chores. It's all, none of it is like, you know, super exciting to do. And so anything you can do to gamify it, that's great. I, and my, and my, that's why uh, time timers are so useful. Oh yeah, um, the, the idea of a time timer that has the the plastic sleeve—it's uh, a red sleeve that slides in front of the time, so that you set it for thirty minutes and then you watch the red sleeve disappear. And it's a very visual um, race against the time clock motivator. And you know, it's totally artificial. There, there's nobody scoring. You know, when you beat the clock, but there's something about. I am now going to try to beat the clock that kicks in some instincts of ours that we then madly start to try to do. So it is another way of gamification. It works really well. And, and for no reason that I understand psychologically, <laughs> but, but it totally <laughs> works. And so if that motivates you, awesome. <laughs> um, Wolf who's who's watching on Facebook said, um, uh, Habitica is an app specifically for gamifying tasks based on RPGs, role-playing games. Are you familiar with Habitica at all? No, I haven't heard of that. I'm going to have to take a look. I, I had not heard of yeah. it either, uh, but it but it actually, cool. it's H-A-B-I-T-I-C-A dot com. Is okay. It, confirm it's dot com. Yes, it is. And it's, their, their tagline is gamify your life. And uh, you can sign up for free and... It, uh, Wolf also said you can team up with friends as well. And so I think you can probably, it's an online tool that you can use to help gamify things you're trying to accomplish. Yeah, how cool. Thanks uh, for the suggestion for us to look into. Let's see. Paul says, I don't feel the need to gamify decluttering. Getting items out of the house is rewarding enough for me. Since my goal is simply less, every item gone is a win. There you go. That's a good way to look at it. If getting it out makes you happy. Um, I have that same feeling when I empty my car when it's full from a client's house. And when I go and donate it all off, it's like, oh, my car's empty again. That is a big reward to me. I'm like, oh, phew. my car stays full of stuff all the time. It's constantly, it's never, um, it's never empty for more than a half a day. And so when I am able to empty it out and see the empty uh, car again, it makes me super happy. I totally get it. <laughs> it is a reward. <clears throat> Let's see. Um, 
uh, Ernestine said, I think Pam and Peggy, the Sidetrack Sisters, have you heard of the Sidetrack Sisters? No. I have to look, look them up. Said something to this effect, make it fun or it won't get done. Perfect. That's a perfect statement. <clears throat> and I think all of us have um, tried to be uh, regimented and rigid about getting things done. We set goals that aren't fun to do things that we don't like. And then we're surprised when we don't get them done. And so right. uh, anything that any way to make that more fun, what makes work more fun when you're going to a job you don't like, it's having fun up there with the people that you uh, work with. <clears throat> when, when we're all collectively working towards a goal that's hard and stressful. Um, if you're doing it with a team of people, um, then that makes it more fun. And so the whole idea of adding some fun to get a project complete is great. And and it's also why accountability with somebody else is part of the fun. If you have to uh, make a phone call and you get to chat with somebody after you've worked for a couple hours and you guys are laughing about what you did and what you didn't do and where, what things came, what got derailed and where, where you ran into the wall and what kind of, what fun thing that you found, you know, oh my gosh, I found a check for $500. I forgot, you know, then it, you, you get to share your experience and that makes it more fun as well. The social element uh, definitely makes it more entertaining for people. So um, anything that you can do, like they say, if it's more fun, you can get it done. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I just modify, um, I'm sure I just modify what they said, but yeah, I think they, they, they said, let's see. Make it fun or it won't get done. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Laurel says, I use Focusmate pretty much daily. Thanks for mentioning it in the past. It automatically sends reports every week. I think I'll attach little rewards for numbers of sessions. Oh, there you go. That's how you're going to gamify it. Okay. Yeah. Do it until it's how it works. Right. Um, e says, make time the app so apparently there's an app called make time also has a time time timer option for a timer in it and i think there is also a time timer app yeah i, I think i've there seen is. that yeah so you can have that <laughs> on your phone or tablet screen yeah it's a few dollars a time timer uh, application on the phone makes draws the little circle of the clock and and adds the little red sleeve on it and you can watch the time subtract on your phone um and it, it that's you know two or three dollars i think to buy the app and then they have little phones that are like this size and then a big one that's a wall clock they originally designed the wall clock um to hang on the wall for uh, kids in a classroom so that was the original application but they figured out that you know of course that works for everybody so there's a there's a small one that I think of. It looks like a travel clock to me, the size. And then there's a desk size that's a slightly larger. So I would say it's probably four or five inches square. And then there's this big, huge wall clock that goes that you can hang on the wall for everybody to see. So um, whichever one makes sense to you, um, they're they're great. The element of for people that have trouble understanding the passage of time, this is particularly true for ADHD people. If visualizing and mentally tracking the passage of time is a hard thing for you then watching the visual sleeve subtract um, and get smaller until it, it you know it goes off at the end you know being you're done um, <clears throat> is a real helpful way to to visualize time because you're watching a shrinking pie basically a shrinking pie slice until it gets small and um, and that seems to help people stay conscious and aware of the passage of time in a way that watching a numbers clock doesn't work for people so if you struggle with the passage of, of tracking the passage of time uh, using a time timer some version of a time timer whether it's the app or an actual clock will help you manage time better uh randy says love pam and peggy they're the precursor of fly lady the fly lady system is an adaptation on the slob sisters and the the apparently slob sisters are also the sidetrack sisters ah, okay they, I, I just i i'm not fam familiar with them but i'll have to have to look into it right clearly uh, which, people have been talking about this stuff for forever which reminds me that one of the things gail and i've talked about doing 
this differently this year is to include more uh, talking about more organizing books and other resources. And uh, so we, we were talking about maybe um, announcing a, a slate of about four, do we say four? Mm -hmm. We're gonna do four books? Four books that we're gonna read this year and talk about. And uh, we, haven't, we haven't put together that entire list yet, although one of the books will definitely be um, Goodbye Everything, Good, no, Goodbye Things, Goodbye Things by Fumio Sasaki, which we've talked about a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. Rowan has talked about that. That's one of the her favorites. That book a lot, she's talked yeah. about it. Yeah. And, and I've, I've read uh, most of it. I'm waiting to get it back from the library to finish it. But we're going to, what we're going to do is we'll announce that list so that you've got plenty of time to read them and then schedule the, the, the meetings at which we'll talk about those particular books and mm. what they have to offer. Pam and Peggy wrote Sidetracked Home Executives back in the 1970s, apparently. Oh, wow. Yeah. See, we've Side been talking about this for a long time. <laughs> yeah, and, that's, been... and Ginger says that's that's where Fly Lady got her system. There's a whole, it, whole, it just uh, goes to show how long we've been, we started accumulating and everybody's starting to have too much stuff. If we started talking about having to deal with it in the 70s, clearly that was when we started having more things that we need, knew what to do with. And we've been living with that ever since. So here we are. Pam Young and Peggy Jones, Jones. it says. Okay. 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 All right. Thank you. And they have both passed away now, Pat added. <clears throat> That's okay. Um, we picked up the torch here. Jane says, Goodbye great. Things is a great book. I also love, I love decluttering at the speed of life too um that's actually one we've talked about we we were maybe that's something we should put out there for pe people to tell us because i don't we don't want to cover several of uh that's uh what is her name oh my gosh i'm drawing a blank all of a sudden dana white dana oh. dana k white right yeah we want to do one of her books and so I'd love to hear from, from our audience about which of her books you think is the best or the most useful or uh, which book would you most like us to talk about? Because mm. we're, we, we want to spread it around. We want to spread around the love and not talk se about several books by the same, uh, same author. Okay, I think we got to do the title. Yeah. Uh, one more thing, actually, before we get to Okay. Next week, um, we actually have a special announcement this week, mm. and that is, I got to find it here, sorry. We want to say a special thank you to A-B, that's A and B-E, the word B-E-E, -E, Okay. And, and Teresa for becoming our newest Patreon supporters. Yay, thank you if, so much. If you would like to help support our efforts with a recurring monthly donation, please visit cfhou.com slash Patreon. Your contributions help us offset the cost of producing this weekly, weekly webcast and all our projects. Thank you for your support, Teresa, AB, and all of our generous underwriters. And let's talk about next week. We will be back same time next week. Tuesday, January 23rd at noon U.S. Central Time, live in Zoom and streaming on Facebook. And we're going we're gonna to talk about a question that came to us from an anonymous survey respondent who said, how do I evaluate the things I have? What questions should or could I ask myself about the items to help me decide what to keep and what to part with? How do I make lists that will help me decide? I'm usually a good list maker of things to get or have or need, but not when it comes to disposal slash transfer slash destroy. So we're going to we're going to talk about that. We don't have a title for that one yet, but watch your email for an announcement. We can definitely help you make lists of questions to ask yourself. So this yes, is a perfect we time. We'll front load you with some questions so you can start 2024 uh, with your list of questions to evaluate and let go of your things. Uh, why don't you give us the tittle? Okay, this week's tittle is, it's so easy when you know the rules. This week's assignment is to gamify a task or a project component. 
Identify a decluttering or organizing project or a repetitive task on which you're struggling to make progress. Design a simple game around the project or task. The elements can include scorekeeping, where you give yourself points, you check off achievements on a calendar or a checklist, or you place stickers on a game board. It can include rewards, uh, choose prizes to reward yourself, and decide at what break points or levels of accomplishment you win each premium. It can include social components, involve your friends, your family members, or accountability partners in your game. And then play your game for a few days and then come back and tell us how it went. We want to uh, get you to dive into the gamification process. So do a little bit and come and tell us. Um, shout out to Tammy, whose who's, uh, birthday is today. Happy birthday, Tammy. And she's the same age I am. And uh, since we don't want to talk about a, a, a lady's age, we're not going to talk about anyone's <laughs> age today. <laughs> But happy birthday, Tammy. <laughs> okay. If you're watching this on YouTube, we'd love for you to join us live. To get notifications about upcoming events, we invite you to join the meetup group by visiting cfhou.com slash meetup. You can also follow us on Facebook by visiting cfhou.com slash Facebook or join our mailing list by visiting cfhou.com slash subscribe. We'd love to hear from you, so please Keep your questions, comments, and topic suggestions coming on YouTube, Facebook, or anywhere that you find us. You can always reach us through our website at clutterfairhouston.com. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today. We're so sorry that we're a week late getting started, but we're here, and it's 2024, and it's go month, and we're ready to go. So you guys gear up, get going, let's game with Kai, and let's uh, start off this year getting you rolling on your project so that by the end of this year, you guys can give us all these reports about all the things that have gone out the house and how much better it is. That's our goal. All right. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.